today I have my friend Rosalyn Ortega. Rose, welcome back. Hey, good morning. Hey, well, uh, thank you for having me again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. You know, I wanted to bring you on. We kind of we kind of decided on uh, last minute we were going to talk about the market and, and things. Uh, just to give some context for the listeners and the viewers, Rose is a New Jersey-based investor, real estate landlord who teaches people how to buy and manage rental properties. She worked in the hospitality industry for over 20 years, started from the bottom, and eventually promoted to a regional role in revenue management in hotels. So she's got hospitality experience. She also is an investor. She's actually an investor in and one of my deals, so she's a limited partner, her and I are partners on a deal. She also earned her name as Urban Teach New York by educating and hosting wealth-related workshops for her local community. Rose, yeah. bienvenida, mi hermana. Thank you for coming gracias, on. Gracias, gracias. See, that was so very nicely put. Yeah. I got I got bio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes, makes you, you sound really good, right? Yeah. Uh, my team really did a good job at putting this together. It says here, they also put here, her investment was not real estate. Her first investment, it says your first investment was in Netflix back, oh, uh, yes. back Netflix wow. stock back in How 2016. <laughs> yeah, these guys, my guys, man, I got it. My team does a really good job. So, Pow and Kat, good job, guys. Um, right. You bought a thousand shares of Netflix. By the way, Netflix is up this morning. Um, is it? Yeah, I just saw my financial my financial newsletter. Um, the market was up yesterday, Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, Friday, January. What was Saturday? Friday, uh, January twentieth. Twentieth, yeah. So the market was up, and um, it was all due to Netflix. Netflix mm -hmm. had more subscribers than anticipated, and I think mm -hmm. I don't remember what the percentage was, but you're right, eight percent. There you go. There you go. There I you go. I have the numbers on my phone too. <laughs> yeah. So do you still hold? Do you still own those those uh, those shares? La bandita. I'll give you a quick uh, synopsis there. So I bought it at four dollars a share mm -hmm. in two thousand six. Four dollars a share, two thousand six. Right. Sold it a year or two later. I can't remember at seventeen dollars. So I good. for my money, right? Mm -hmm. I thought I was a superstar. I'm like, mm -hmm. ooh, I, I got this. And then it started climbing through the years. And every mm -hmm. time I look at it, I'm like, oh, I should have uh, kept it at four. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I know, I know. That's uh, That was interesting, right? The way that the market shifted back in those days. You and I are both old enough to remember. By the way, Rose is also grown, born and raised in New York City from Dominican mm -hmm. heritage like myself. So we have a lot in common to that respect. We grew up in the same culture in the same city. Um, to think you and I are both old enough to remember the blockbuster days. Have you seen that <laughs> documentary, by the way? The blockbuster. I have. Documentary? I have not yet. I need to. It's on my list. But yeah. Yeah. The, it's the a, it's envelopes. A, yeah, <laughs> you remember blockbuster? Huh? We used to go pick up. It was. It was interesting though, having to go pick up, buy pizza. That's the way I remember. It. Buy pizza for right. the family. Go go to blockbuster. We would go, and everyone would pick a movie. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah, interesting and hope time. That it wasn't both sold out or all gone, right? Yep, 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 yep. And and technology has changed things so much. And you know, um, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix, and they they refused to. There's a great, it's a great documentary. I saw it on a flight the other day. I don't remember where I was flying, where I was traveling, but I saw it on a flight. Um, but anyways, I want to talk about what's happening with the unemployment, right? Because we know that three things drive real estate, right? And that's employment growth. Unemployment, right, being down, mm -hmm. jobs being up, which they invert, and population growth. And right now in 2023, I got some numbers here and some data. I'd like to get your thoughts on it. Amazon, 18,000 jobs, 18,000 layoffs. Now, that's global, right? That's right. still a lot. That's still a lot. Microsoft, 10,000 jobs. Google, 12,000 layoffs. This is all right. 2023, by the way. This is right. on top of this of the layoffs they already did last year. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs, 3,200 jobs. Salesforce, 10% of their sales force, right? Wow. 8,000 jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. that is significant. What are your thoughts on the impact that that will have on real estate, on investments overall? Well, I think that we're sure going to see some impact, some impact more in some markets than others um honestly like i i'm a big numbers person so i'll have to sit and see what is the total workforce for amazon like what number does that really represent 1.2 million it's a small percentage right that's one mm -hmm. two where are these layoffs happening right is it over on the west coast in their distribution centers is it happening in major cities where is it 
Because again, if it's not affecting certain areas where people make a living with those companies, they're still going to be able to buy property, rent property, you know, be able to afford what's happening here with inflation and everything. So those are the, the, the couple of things that I need to go back and kind of dissect and mm-hmm. hone in on. Um, on a grand scheme of things, yes, these layoffs are, are scary. You know, it's happening. I think all these companies are pulling back on expenses. They're also feeling inflation and lack of right revenues coming in. Maybe forecasting for the next quarters doesn't look as great as they expected it to be. So they have to cut somewhere. Mm-hmm. And normally when companies, big corporations need to flow better to the bottom line, labor is the first line that gets, you know, affected, Just right? Mm-hmm. So they're, they're sitting there like, okay, these books that might look a little tricky, where can we start trimming the fat? And it's going to start always at labor. Mm-hmm. I know that from experience, from coming from these big hotel companies. You know, we start combining positions. We start eliminating certain areas or certain departments. Or we, you know, start laying off of certain areas and then say, you know what, in six months, we'll go back and rehire at different r- rates. Um, so it could be a, a number of things, honestly. Got it. Um, so so the thing, I, you know, a lot a lot of this has to do with the fear mongers, you know, for for yeah. now, for over a year, I've been, you know, I've been watching the data on real estate and me, the media drives a lot about drives the market a lot right because it's a lot of it is psychological if we start it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy a recession is coming a recession is coming a recession is coming so people start hearing that start hearing that so they start behaving like a recession is here i believe we're already in the recession i've been saying yeah Yeah, last year july i said when we had two negative consecutive quarters of negative gdp and then this administration wanted to change redefine the name of what a recession is and they were hanging their hats on unemployment and here we at here we are the the talking heads have been singing this praise about recession 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 i want to get into i want to go into the redfin data you know yes um, let's do it let me let me share my screen here with the with the viewers and here we go so here's a redfin here's the market update okay and here's what they're saying this is as for week ending january 13 2023 so mm-hmm. uh prices remain elevated because buyer activity has started to pick up as mortgage rates decline due to slowing inflation average mortgage rates dropped to 6.15 during the week ending of january 19. I was just doing some math here, Rose, and the impact of that, the impact of that is so, it's so impactful because when you look at when I did, I was doing it at 6.04 because it said the average rate, if I, when I, when you go down mm-hmm. on this, on this article, it says that the average rate for a 30 year more, the daily average was 6.04, right? Okay. Under the leading indicators. And it's right there. It says, for week ending January 19th, 30 year mortgage rates dropped 6.15, and the daily average rate was 6.04% on January 18th. So, what I did was I took the average home price at 350, right? Mm-hmm. At, let's say a year ago, we would have been at 4.5. A mortgage payment would have been 1722. El mismo, el mismo mortgage at the same price. Yes. Today, the same house is at at the new rates at the six at the average rates of six point zero four, which, by the way, is the lowest it's been since I think October or November's high right. of seven percent. It's twenty one oh seven. We're talking three hundred eighty five dollars different difference to buy the same in monthly payments. Difference to right. buy the same exact house, nothing extra, no extra features, nothing's changed on the house, right. but yet it's costing the average American three hundred eighty five dollars more a month, forty eight hundred dollars more a year. What are your thoughts on that? When you see that, the rates, and you see unemployment, you see these headings. I think the the uh, middle class earners are going to start realizing that they are not going to be able to afford home ownership, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's going to probably start shifting a little bit. I've already seen it where there's folks that have a pre-approval with an FHA at 3.5% down that got pre-approved 9, 12 months ago at 4%. And that number is the number that they were looking to pay that they can afford to pay. And now things drastically have changed. So those are the folks that are falling out of the buyer's bank, right? They're b- the buyer's group. They're like, you know what? I-, I can't afford the extra $300 a month. I just mm-hmm. can't do it. So I'll just keep renting. Mm-hmm. But then there's 
you know, smaller group that's in there that is still like, you know, if it's, if it's up 300, I can still do it. Um, gas prices are going down a little bit. I don't know about in your area, but in mine, we've, we've seen the drops, which mm-hmm. is nice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, car prices have gone down, used okay. car prices. So there's a couple of other things that people that are still um, committed to buying their home, they're going to look at those things and say, okay, I'm saving a little bit here so I can afford the extra 300. I just think the pool's going to be much smaller, right? So the folks that are looking that can afford that increase in interest rate, it's going to be a very small group, which reflects in the data when you see the listings are down, the you know the closings are down, the mortgage applications are down. Um, so I think it's it's definitely a shift. It's, something's happening. It's just we we kind of need to understand how all of the buckets of the buyers are going to be affected. Yeah, we we see pricing going up. I want to show you one more piece here. Yeah. I was doing a little bit of. I want to share one more piece here. Let me let me just share this with you, and um, let me go here to real earnings. This is from bls.gov, and real average hourly earnings decrease one point seven percent seasonally adjusted from December twenty twenty one. Decrease rose. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. The, to December 2022. The change in real hourly earnings combined with decrease of 1.4% in the average work week resulted in a 3.1% decrease in real average weekly earnings over this period. Um, so wages have gone down, yet price, the cost of housing has gone up. What's the solution to this? What can everyday Americans look? I, you have a large community that you serve and you mentor. You mentor new investors. You teach people how to buy and rent. By the way, follow her guys on Instagram. She's always putting out amazing content on there. So make sure you check her mm-hmm. out. Um, Urban Teach, right? That's your that's yes, your handle. Urban Teach underscore. Anyway, so you're teaching and you're, and you're sharing a lot with your community. Um, what are you what advice are you giving your folks right now in this position so i want two buckets if you can share your perspective on two buckets the first bucket is what are you telling someone que quiere comprar wants to buy their first home right like hey they want to they want to buy a home they want to get out of renting buy a home and i know you you're a big you're a big proponent of house hacking because that's how you kind of started you've shared that here before with me and then the other bucket of investors that want to start investing what are you Got telling it. them when you're considering all this data? Yeah. What we just what we just looked at. Well, the the most important thing is that the numbers have to make sense, right? So I would never advise someone that, <clears throat> excuse me, wants to get into home ownership when the numbers, you know, their income versus their expenses are going to be so tight that there's very little wiggle room for emergencies. Let's say. Mm-hmm. So for the first time home buyer, I'm always like, okay, what's your budget? What is your monthly expenses? You know. What is your wiggle room? Do you have an extra thousand dollars a month that you can set aside for emergencies? Do you, or you know, is it a hundred dollars a month? If it's a hundred dollars a month, it's not enough. So you might not be in a position to purchase right now. You might have to wait. And also, how much rent are you paying? So I think that you know, when we tell some folks are like, I'm gonna wait to buy because the market might crash, right? They keep hearing the word crash. And They might wait to buy, but at the same time, their lease might be up in two months and their rent is going from eighteen hundred to twenty eight hundred. We've seen it happen in Mm -hmm. this market. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 percent rent increase one year to the next. Mm -hmm. So I I have to often kind of analyze the entire picture before even saying whether, you know, that person's in a position to buy or not. Now, if they're in a rent stabilized situation where the rent only goes up three percent, they want to wait another year so they can save another 10 K or switch jobs and make a little more money, then that also works. It's, it's also a play, depending on kind of what their expenses are. So really, the, the play really varies by the situation. I always tell folks that it's not black and white. It's very, you know, you have to really see all the data, like how much is your rent? Is Do you expect it to go up? By how much? I spoke to a couple the other day where um, they just got engaged. The ladies making, the ladies paying $2,400 in rent in a luxury building in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. She just got noticed that her rent is going up to $3,000. Right. Her fiance lives in the city, downtown Manhattan. He pays 2,200 with a roommate. His rent's going up to 2,900. So combined, they're spending over $5,000 in rent a month. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so buying a home that's four fifty and their mortgage and interest and everything is in the low fours, up a three k, might make sense to them because again, they're they're already spending this money on two sides without tax benefits, without appreciation, without all that good stuff. So it really depends on kind of what side they're in. For the investor, I mean, you already know the the inventory is very is not out there, right? So. Yes. It's very scarce. It's very tricky. Um, building materials are still up. Permitting, all that. It's just very messy. So for the newbie investor, yes, uh, house hacking is my first recommendation always. You know, find yourself a multifamily. F- learn the landlord game. Live on property for a year. Use your FHA. Join a first-time home buyer program. You know, they allow for multifamily purchases. So that's kind of my advice on that side. Great, 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 great advice. Um, it's a tricky, tricky, tricky market to navigate, Rose. Yes, um, sure. Let's let's look at this data a little more. We have mortgage purchase applications um, during the week ending January thirteenth jumped twenty five percent. That would that would make sense, right? From a week earlier, seasonally adjusted purchase applications were down thirty five percent year over year, right? From a year earlier, so. Google searches for homes, and I'm going to share a little bit on this with you. Google searches for homes were up 30% from their November low during the week ending January 14th, but down 26% from a year earlier. So um, Google search, that's a lead indicator of what's going to happen the next week. I've been doing this for weeks now, this Mm -hmm. week market update, and Redfin always puts that in there, Google search. And what I see is when Google search is down, because I have properties on the market right now, I see less deep i see lower demand literally direct effect mm. lower showings on my properties when i see searches is up, are up i see and interest rates are down both the combination of both interest rates down and searches up i get a mm. higher demand you know i have a couple of properties on the market right, right. now we've talked about them off air and um we got in six weeks i got about five showings i put that on on the market five mm. or six showings something like that in six weeks, that means the demand just dropped off a cliff. In yeah. December, we had the worst, the worst showing in, since 2014 or something like that. I think wow. is what the data did, said. Show you know the number of showings. Um, November, December, November into uh, December actually, because it was I put it yeah. Monday after Thanksgiving, okay. and um, w- rates going having gone down the last few weeks and searches on Google having gone up impact i got six showings just this week this weekend six seven showings this weekend yeah okay so what's interesting is that this is a lead indicator this is real-time lead indicator now granted this is nationwide right this is nationwide google searches but it's a real-time lead indicator and if you're a realtor and you're watching and or listening to this you need to be paying attention to that uh because that's a real real lead indicator what are your thoughts on on housing demand and the tricky place that we're in right now with housing the de- inventory still being low, housing and then buyers interest rates still being high? What do you consider a crash? What do you, in your opinion different 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 people have different meanings for crash? Right. What I can tell you is that watching the data, we are going to, at the rate we've been going down we peaked the nation peaked in june right that was Mm -hmm. our peak number and of course that's market by market here in the poconos we peaked in april right we peaked in april as a nation we peaked in june so based on the data at the rate we've been going down the market's been going backwards on price reductions and closings and things like that we're gonna we're gonna be below peak rose in three months by the end of mm-hmm. by the end of March, we'll be below that June peak, so okay. we'll be under three fifty one, whatever the average home price is in the United States. Right. Um, what is your thoughts on where the market is, and what do you consider a crash? I mean, a crash in my market would be it would have to be more than ten percent. You know, it have mm-hmm. to be twenty percent drop. Um, sa- sales coming to a scratch, screeching halt, which we have not happened seen last yet. month. It happened last month for us here, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, like it happened last month in the month. Well, I think of also December. December this this past December is kind of like, you know, it's that month where the 
the data was coming out, the, the fear was coming out, right? The interest rates was peaking up. There was a lot of other factors too. The holidays were there, right? It's the end of the year. A lot of folks didn't get their bonuses or were not expected to get a bonus probably. I've heard a few that were expected to get bonus payout early now and we're told in December that the company did not make their numbers and they're not getting a bonus. So I think a lot of that. Also That's a lead indicator. That's an important. Yeah, indicator. absolutely. You know, and then folks also like we're counting on that money to maybe go and make a purchase and go to an open house. And now they're like, oh, well, it's not going to work. Right. I got to wait um, for my market. Yeah, it's got to be a, a big enough dent. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're seeing price drops at least the sold number versus the listing number down 5%, very ratio. minimal. Five, five, yeah, your well, ratio it's, is 5%. Right. The ratio is not out of this world, you know, 25, 30K uh, below, comparing it in 2022. If we go back to before COVID, when home prices were kind of growing steadily at 3 to 5% in my market, it's still well above a what it was in 2019. You know, we just had a massive double digit growth here for the last two years. Yeah. So for it to drop 5%, it just means that we still grew 8%. Yeah. You know, because our growth has been 13, 14, 15% year over year. Yeah. Um, so we're not as panicky here, but the number of listings have gone down tremendously because now, now the home seller can't find another place to move to. So they're waiting to list. So we went from an average of 90. Uh, listings a month live to 42, 40 to 42. Listings wow, 50%. Yeah. That's huge. 50% drop. Yeah, it's really, really tight. So, and what's happening with the realtors, right? So think about also that. So we just went over at the beginning of, of, of our discussion here, we went over some employment issues happening in, in the tech world and, and job in the job industry. You just said to me that some of some people you know personally were expecting bonuses in December didn't happen because the companies didn't make their numbers. Again, lead indicator. Happens. So now what happens with what happens with the market, right? What happens with the, you know, it's like we're at a standoff here. We're at a standoff with buyers and sellers. Sellers, sellers don't want to list. The only ones actually listings, not only ones, but the majority, at least here, a lot of us, the ones listing are investors, right? Because we need to move right. assets. And then, and then buyers are like interest rates are too high. So, and then sellers don't want to don't want to lower the price. It's like where are we and where does this end and where do we go right. from here and when will this shift? Right? right? When will we go to normalization? You just said fifty percent drop. What happens to realtors? We talked about employment a moment ago. So in two thousand and eight, Rose, we saw a major, major. Uh, um, loss of yeah. real drop in realtors right they all went to work in retails bartenders mortgage guys too i was one of those yeah. mortgage guys that lost that gave up i literally put my license in the in my garbage can in my garage wow like in 2009 um so i think i think we're going to see that again i mean how are how are realtors eating right now when 42 percent. how many realtors are in your market right there's about 3500 i think is a number here guys don't quote me i know i'll Guys in the mm -hmm. Poconos are going, ah, oh, you're wrong. But I think it's about 3,000 to 3,500. And yet there was 342 closings in the month of December. How are they eating? That's How crazy. are they making a living? Yeah, I mean, I, at least in my market, I know that a lot of the realtors are, they have multiple hats, right? A lot of them do it part-time. They have full-time jobs because, they, you know, this is a very... It was a very rich in activity market. Mm -hmm. So folks were just getting their license, kind of doing it on the side, you know, so it doesn't affect those folks. The folks that do it full time are the ones that are going to feel the pain because mm -hmm. now they have to hustle a little more. Right. I think that a lot of them, you know, the old school ones might not necessarily be in social media like we are. So their form of um, acquiring new leads is very antiquated. Right. They're not shifting with the times. So those folks are going to start dropping off soon. Because again, the leads are so tight. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's going to be a shift. The mortgage lenders as well. You know, those calls are not coming in like they were. The pre-approvals are not, you know, flying in uh, every other minute. So it's it's going to get tough for I think for everybody. Home inspectors, right? Title company. Uh, home, title companies. 
appraisers. Appraisers. It's going to affect everyone, everyone and everyone. Um, but I think also that, you know, this year is going to be shaky, like we said at the beginning. But the the projection is that by next year, things should kind of level off a little bit with elections, the stock market hopefully kind of readjusting itself. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, guys, thanks for watching this video to the very end. If you want to continue to watch videos like this one, click this video right here. I think you would enjoy that. And if you want to continue to learn from me and learn how to create wealth through real estate investing, check out my online course. It's in the links below. It's how to get your first off market deal in under 60 days or less. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Peace out.